I tried that and it didn't work, and I tried that and it didn't work, and I tried that and it didn't work, and I tried that and it didn't work. Because you think that trying something for a little while ought to bring you a big return. But life does not work like Apple. Life does not click and it appears. Some stuff takes time. Greatness takes time. It takes time. You got to be prepared to get a thousand no's to get one yes. The thing you need to win is resilience. You can't just keep trying different stuff, different stuff, because you can never say something didn't work when you didn't have try. Be resilient. Stick it out. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Resilient. Life is going smoothly, then the bottom falls out. Everything is coming up roses, then the bottom falls out. Everything is working out in his favor, and then the bottom falls out. The life starts going your way finally, then the bottom falls out. You plan your retirement, and now you have to take care of your grandchildren. You plan for life to work a certain way, and then the bottom falls out. You're looking for this, and God sends that. You have to be awfully immature to think that every day is going to be a good day. Some days are better than other days. And some days, if it ain't one thing, it's another. What would you do if you knew you could fail, but understood that that failure could be a real blessing in your life? Now, that's a good question. Because I think we don't reach our possibilities, not because the door isn't open, but because we stop before we get to the door. Every possibility is surrounded by obstacles and challenges. I've never had a possibility with a clear path that I had no opposition to. and just ran up there and knocked on the door and everything opened and everything was good. That only happens in the movies, friends. Resilience. Resilience, the ability to return to the original form after being bent or being compressed. That's the dictionary's definition of resilience. The ability to readily recover from illness or depression. Resilience, being able to withstand setback, financial crisis, loss of loved ones, loss of enterprise, and loss of health. How would you ever handle it if you lost everything you had today? What would it take for you to pull yourself up and start all over again? How resilient are you? Could you learn from all your disappointments and start all over again? What would it take? It would take a lot of positive self-talk to muster up the energy to begin again. It would take a lot of concentration to block out the noise and the clutter and the negative voices of others around you. It would also take what? A lot of self-reliance. Your future success has everything to do with you. What's happened has happened. You would need to get on with your life and begin again. It would take a lot of faith and trust in God to move ahead. It would take a lot of self-appreciation, knowing that you have the skills and the talent and the strength to do it one more time. Resilience, the ability to bounce back from adversity, no matter how large or how small. Possibilities are always surrounded by challenges. You got to get through the challenges to get to the possibilities, but it's worth it. It's kind of like a Tootsie Roll. You got to get through the hard stuff so you can get to the good soft stuff. That's the way it is with life. That's the way it is with possibilities. What's the use of always keeping thinking of the past? Each must have his tribulation, water with his wine. Life, it ain't no celebration. Trouble, I've had mine, but today is fine. It's today that I'm living, not a month ago, having, losing, taking, giving, as time wills it so. Yesterday, a cloud of sorrow fell across the way. It may rain again tomorrow. It may rain, but say, ain't it fine today? If a cloud of sorrow comes over here, ain't it fine today? Living in the moment, getting everything we can out of where we are in the moment where we are right now. The other thing is willingness to let people and things go. You want to live a life of fulfillment. You've got to be willing to let 
certain people go in your life. When they're no longer good for you, just let them go. Just to hold on tenaciously really doesn't make really good sense, all right? Just many times we do it because we don't realize that we might desire it, but we don't need it. Face the truth about life and deal with it. Whatever happens to you, use everything for your upliftment, learning, and growth. Everything that happens, use it for your upliftment. What can I get from this? How did I end up here? What's the blessing in this for me? Ask yourself that whatever it is, and don't let it go until you get your blessing out of it, because there's a blessing there. There's something for you in everything that happens to you for you to learn from that experience. Look at it, examine it, analyze it, until it reveals itself to you, and then get what you need from that and move on. It takes time to make changes in habit and discipline. Here's the ultimate challenge. You've got to have patience with yourself. It takes time to correct old errors in judgment. I'm telling you, it took me some time. I used to blame the government, and blame taxes, and blame the company. It took time to give that up and only blame myself. So have patience with yourself, number one. Number two is to keep doing it. Be persistent. As long as you are patient and persistent, it's hard to elude success. As long as you maintain patience and persistence, there's only one person, just one person, that will draw the line between success and failure. And that person is you. So be patient. Be persistent. You need both patience and persistence together. And here's why. Lack of patience is probably the worst enemy of ambition. Impatience wants to give up. Impatience calls discouragement failure. But your ambition won't let you give up so easily. Not if you're persistent. What others may call failure, ambition calls a learning opportunity. Ambition knows that the longer the achievement is in coming, the more valued it is. Oh, please, listen to yourself. You know the feelings, if you start listening to the feelings in your heart, and I'm doing it now more every day, I find that my feelings, I can trust them. And I say to you, that as you look toward the future, you look at life on a daily basis, if you've heard something within yourself that you know that, that what you're doing now doesn't fit for you, it doesn't work for you, it's not giving you what you want, and there's something else that you want to do, don't allow that inner doubt in you to talk you out of it, to tell you why you're not good enough. You ignore that inner voice and all of the external voices. Don't judge the possibilities for what you can do based upon the circumstances, because the circumstances won't determine who you are. Don't determine what you're able to do based upon your resources. Don't determine what's possible for you based upon where your life is right now. Where your life is right now is not you. That's just what it is right now. But the possibilities for you are unlimited. It's unlimited if you're coming back from adversity and devastation. It's unlimited of what you can do. That's the capacity of human beings. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter how many flops you've had. It doesn't matter how much money you've lost of what you learned from life. Not losses, but investments of what's possible for you. And I say to you that once you start listening to yourself and as you begin to act on your dream, you will start seeing things opening up for you. You'll start attracting people. you start brainstorming. Ideas will come out of nowhere as you focus on it. The key to it is to begin to focus because as you focus on that which you want to do, that which we focus on, that which we give our energy to, it will begin to multiply. It will begin to expand. It will begin to develop your consciousness. And out of that comes your greatness. Out of that comes a commitment. Out of that comes a passion for life. Out of that comes a special power that you have in you. See, the, the powers that we have will never reveal themselves if we don't challenge them. Put yourself in a position where you can't retreat, where it's do or die, sink or swim. Here's what you'll find out. You'll develop incredible swimming skills. You'll find yourself stroking unlike you've ever seen before. Through the inspiration of desperation, you become more creative than ever before. All you can do is all you can do. And all you can do is enough. Make sure you do all you can do. Knowing when an opportunity is right and when more preparation is needed. 
Be patient in knowing the difference between when the opportunity is right and when more work needs to be done. Remain alert, even if opportunity doesn't come right away. Keep looking. Be patient. Keep preparing for opportunities, even if there's a delay. Even if things aren't going just the way you think they should, keep your disappointments at bay. Be prepared. Always be prepared. Don't let impatience allow you to give up. Take the little setbacks in stride. Don't let small disappointments discourage you. Don't let the little successes delude you. Avoid the emotional roller coaster that will always, always disrupt your plan. God put people in your life for a reason. Others are there for a season. And it's very important that you recognize when people's seasons are over. Is the season over? Or have you decided because you're desperate, you've decided to drag these random people into the new season of your life? Because you just need validation. You need all of this shit and people and things around you. You have spent your entire life trying to gain the approval of other people. Everything you do is determined to get other people's acceptance and approval. You talk the way you do in order to get other people's acceptance and approval. You dress the way you do in order to get other people's approval. You do certain things in life, some things you wouldn't even want to do, but you do them because you want the approval of other people. And you've been trying to gain approval your entire life, and you're never going to get it. I have an opportunity, I have a choice to decide who and what and where I want to go. What do I want to experience in my day? Because you're calling me doesn't mean I'm going to call you back. Because you're inviting me doesn't mean I want to show up. Because we're family, because we're friends, because we grew up together doesn't mean that I want to be a part of any and everything that you want me to be a part of. Why? Because my experience with you hasn't necessarily made me feel good about my life or my experience at the end of every night. Why would you walk in the opposite direction of your dreams? The man wishes for happiness and thinks the thoughts and commits the acts that take him to certain despair. Failing in life is failing to think today. Failing to care, to climb, to learn, to keep trying day by day. What have you got to lose? Only the despair and fear and guilt of the past. So start the new process. You can begin a new habit no matter how small it is. Whether or not you start and whether or not you continue are all that is important. Recognize that the start of the better life, the happy life, is today. Start the new journey today. Get some momentum going on your new commitment to the better life. Do you love yourself enough? For a lot of people out there, that's what holds them back in life. So whatever your goal is, you're going to come to a time when you're going to have to stop counting on other people to help you. And you're going to have to stop focusing in on how much people have let you down. And you're going to have to really realize, like, this thing, life, your journey, this is up to you. And whatever you want out of it, it's how bad are you willing to go after it. The more you love yourself, the more you believe in yourself, the more you focus on your own intention, the less you have concern with getting that acknowledgement and recognition from other people. The words out of their mouth are about you, but what they're really thinking about is them. The more you begin to understand this, you really stop spending so much energy on worrying about what other people think about you. In other words, your own acknowledgement, your own character, your own belief in yourself supersedes what anyone else could ever say about you. Quit feeling inferior because somebody close to you is not celebrating you. Quit trying to make people be for you that are never going to be for you. If you needed their approval, you would get it. If you're not getting it, that means you don't need it to become who you were created to be. Some of you have spent all of your life trying in your mind to please an unpleasable person.
and you wanted to show them wrong. And, and your dad or your mom said, you're never going to amount to anything. Why can't you be like your brother? And you, in your mind, thought, I am going to earn their approval. And you have tried and you have tried and you have tried to win that person's approval and you haven't got it. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the pain you've been in, but let me just tell you something. That person that you've been trying to get their approval all your life and you haven't got it yet, guess what? You ain't going to get it. If you haven't got it by now, you're not going to ever get it. So if there's any area in your life that you need to clean up, start working on it. Get the clutter out. Start letting some of this junk go to make some room for something else. Do that with people. There's some people who's cluttering up your life. They serve no purpose whatsoever. They're just holding and occupying the space that somebody useful could be holding that space. You don't even have time to look to see what else is out there because you all have all of these people surrounding you that's not in enabling you to grow. But when you realize that God loves you unconditionally and without condition of any type, you realize this. I don't need the approval of other people and it sets you free. I don't need other people's approval to be happy. I don't have the luxury to waste time. I'm expecting some great things from life. And so I have to spend some time working on myself and developing myself. Some people wish they could do better, but some people expect to do better. Where are you on that? Take care of you. Look out for what truly satisfies you. Make caring for you the highest priority in your life. We're not taught to look out for ourselves. We're not taught to take care of ourselves. So make a conscious effort. Make you number one priority. Your health is more important than your family and any and everybody. Don't neglect yourself. Happiness is a joy that most often comes as a result of positive activity. It is a result of an awareness of the full range of life. Happiness is being able to explore the offerings of life. Happiness is both receiving and sharing, reaping and bestowing. Happiness is activity with purpose. Happiness is freedom from the negative children of fear, such as worry, anger, low self-esteem, envy, greed, and so on. Happiness is contentment with the tasks of your life. It's love in practice. Happiness is both a grasp of the obvious as well as an awe of the mysterious. Because God selects what people reject. Don't you turn around and do the opposite. Don't downplay what makes you destined. Don't reject what makes you special. Discipline is the bridge between thought and accomplishment. The bridge between inspiration and value achievement. The bridge between necessity and productivity. The first key to discipline is awareness of the need for the discipline to make the changes. What must I do and what must I become to get all I want from my life? The eagerness to maintain your new discipline deliberately, wisely, consistently, to master the circumstances of your daily life. Disciplining ourselves to fulfill our natural potential to become all that we can be. Opportunity is always looking for ambition and skill in action. I was 27 years old and I was like miserable. Just kept trying to figure out what my life was for. Two most important days of your life are the day you're born and the day you discover why. And at 27, I just hadn't figured out the why. And I walked into a comedy club, October 8th, 1985. I won amateur night that night. I went to work the next day and quit my job. The day I quit, my boss, he talked me right out of it. He said, Steve, you're not even funny. He said, are you kidding me? You've got a family. You put that stuff back on your desk, but don't you ever come in here again with something ridiculous. You're gonna be a comedian. Dude named Russell Middlebrooks came up to me and said, Hey, Harv, I thought you was quitting today, man. I said, No, nah. I talked to Tom and he told me I wasn't funny. He said, He don't know you. You the funniest dude I know. And then he looked at me, he was so hurt. He said, Damn, dog, I told everybody you was leaving today. 
He said, man, I can't believe he let you let that tell you what to do. And I took that box right back in and I said, Tom, I'm really funny. I'm going to make it. He said, I'll tell you what, you leave out this door, don't ever come back in here again. He said, you're making a huge mistake leaving your family out like this. Probably about 20 years after that, he was at a show. And he said, I came to the show, I saw this Steve Harvey. He said, oh my God, I always knew you were going to make it. None of my family believed in me. The only family member I had that thought it was a good idea was my father. And uh, he just said, son, if you think you can make it, get on out there and get your scuffle. My father was born in 1914. My grandfather was born into slavery. My grandfather was a slave till he was 12. And my dad was the only one believed in me. Everybody else told me no. Laughed at me. <laughs> Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, but it's necessary that you have it, that you go for what is yours in the universe. I have a friend that I said, I want you to work with me. I called her up. She said, Les, are you sure I can do it? Sure you can. If I can do it, sure you can do it. In fact, I'm going to give you the support. So I was telling her, that I knew she hated a job with a passion. See, a lot of people go to work every day miserable and all they do is just talk about how miserable they are. But they don't do anything about it. And we've been going through this for years, ladies and gentlemen. She brought her husband and that was one of the major problems that I realized he couldn't see it for her. So you gotta make sure that you have people in your life that can see it for you. So I said, but if you can't see it for it, don't tell her that. Just give her some support. What if you're wrong? You've seen her speak. She's got great speaking skills. You've got a great woman here. But you see, people who can't see it for themselves can't see it for you. So I said, will you do it with me? I said, I'm going to give you the support you need. You can't do it by yourself. I will stand with you. She said, okay. Three days later, I got an emergency call at my office. It was from my husband. He called and said, tell Les Brown that Marion is dead. And I remember the last time that I saw her and I had some of her papers. And what got me, what was so sad that made me begin to cry was that there were poems that she had started that were profound poems, great thoughts that she didn't complete. That poem was given to her. I can't finish that for her. That play, whatever the outcome that she had envisioned, was given to her. I believe all of us have some purpose for being here. And I was reading a newspaper that said that millions of people are dying because of what they're eating, talking about their diet. So that even more are dying because of what's eating them. You've got to find ways to increase your sense of self-appreciation, because if you don't, you will find yourself unconsciously engaged in self-destructive behavior. If you don't program yourself, life will program you. The major key to your reaching your dream, your making your contribution, is you. When I wanted to get on public television, you know, they told me, you can't do that. Let's, excuse me, hold me, hold time out. Let's be realistic. I said, well, wait a minute, why can't I do it? Well, let's look here. You don't have any college training now, girl. Give me a break. What people think about you and the possibilities for your dream is none of your business. They have no imagination, ladies and gentlemen. They're living out of the past, out of their memory. Their attitude is it can't be done because they haven't seen it. The people that are going to make it in the future let me share something with you. History is being read, but it's also being written by people with imagination. You look at your life, you look at what you produce. Are you doing all you can do? Have you gotten comfortable? Are you surrounding yourself with people that can nourish you? Are you learning something different? Is your life an adventure or is it boring? What decisions are you making right now as you look into the future? 
You don't want to ever put yourself in a, vis in a situation where you have a limited vision and you're only using a limited amount of your talents and of your abilities. And I'm saying to you that it's necessary that you get outside of your comfort zone, that you do reading, that you do research. It's necessary that you don't be satisfied with where you are. If you want to make it today, it's necessary for you to constantly look at ways of getting better. This is not going to be it for my life. I deserve more than this. It's easy to water down what God's promised us. I don't like this job, but at least I'm employed. I was believing for a nice house, but I guess this apartment will do. I guess I'm at least okay. No, okay is not who you were created to be. The enemy can't stop God's plan for your life, but he'll do his best to convince you to set more along the way. There has to be a holy determination. I refuse to settle for less than what God's promised me. You're not going to water it down. You're not going to let good enough be good enough. God doesn't abort a dream. He doesn't get talked out of what he's promised. Now maybe the reason you're not seeing this favor is you've settled. As long as you think that way, it will limit your life. I'm asking you to pack up your belongings. Mediocrity is not your home. You may be there now, but that is not your permanent location. Don't settle for an okay marriage, okay life. Yes, we should be content, but you shouldn't be satisfied with less than what you know God put in your heart. I'll never reach my dreams, but hey, I'm doing as good as my coworker. That's not too bad. Why don't you leave the goal there and say, God, I don't see how this can work out. But God, I know you wouldn't have promised it if you weren't going to bring it to pass. So I'm not going to settle here. I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep stretching my faith. That's what allows God to do great things. Well, Joel, I can't think of any good reason to get my hopes up. Let me give you one great reason the Most High God is on your side. You wouldn't be hearing this if he wasn't about to do something unusual, something that you didn't see coming. People will scratch their heads. How did your business take off so fast? You didn't have the connections. No, but you have the favor of God. What he's promised you will come to pass. Not a good enough version. Get ready for the fullness of what God said. Don't reduce it to what makes sense to you. Don't let what you don't have talk you out of what God does have. God, this seems impossible to me, but I know you can do the impossible. You can take me where I can't go on my own. You may feel like your hands are tied. You've done your best, but it seems like you've reached your limits. The good news is God's hands are not tied. What's restricted you in the past has lost its grip. The sickness, the financial difficulties, the trouble at work, this is a new day. Now start seeing yourself free. See yourself rising to new levels, fulfilling your purpose. Your hands are not tied anymore.